you, Sister Jennifer. I'm glad that song is a great, great uh, inspiration to our hearts and lives to remind us no turning back. Amen. Keep pressing on for the Lord. I'm glad that uh, ought to be our attitude in this day and age. It has to be. And I'm thankful for all of you being here tonight. I trust you've had a good day. And I thank God for his blessing on our lives today. It's been a good day. Uh, eventful, non-eventful, whatever you had. Some of you have been uh, around the world today and back. And some of you have just like me been to Rome and back. And I've seen a lot of people. But uh, anyway, and that's not Rome, Italy. That's Rome, Georgia. So... Amen. But I'm glad you're here. I'm glad you made it to uh, our service tonight, and I'm thankful for all of God's blessings today. He's watched over us, took care of us, and provided for us, and I'm grateful and thankful that he has. We're going to dive into our study tonight in just a moment. Don't forget, of course, our announcements, the things that we have coming up, and uh, to be prayerful about those announcements in the bulletin. Don't forget those and all these things coming up. Our brotherhood is going to be meeting here in just a, it's just a few days on Sunday, so don't forget that. And, of course, don't forget the other uh, things that we have planned and other things that are coming up. Don't forget those as well. We want to be mindful of those and remind others to come and be a part of that. Come join us and uh, be a part of what the Lord is doing around here at Four Mile Baptist Church. I'm grateful and thankful for what God is doing, aren't you? I'm glad to be a part of that. Amen. Been inviting folks and encouraging them to come. Invited a man today and uh, told him what God was doing. And I'm thankful that God is doing great things. And he is still on the throne, knows what's going on. Amen. Let's pray together and ask the Lord to help us tonight. He knows what we stand in need of. And then uh, at the close of our service tonight, we'll have a time of prayer for those on our prayer list and special needs as well. And call names and ask the Lord to help in those. And I'm glad we have an all-sufficient, all-hearing and answering God. What's well, good to know in this day and age we live in. Let's pray. Father, I want to thank you that we can come boldly to your throne of grace. And Lord, I'm thankful that you do hear and answer prayer. Thank you, Lord, for the prayers you've already heard today. Uh, Lord, for the needs you've already met on our behalf, Lord. Showing yourself mighty and powerful and all wise. So many times we ask you for things that we know not about. But yet, Lord, even in our ignorance, you are patient with us. And, uh, Lord, you are long-suffering with us. And yet, Lord, you are so kind and so tender and understanding. Lord, you remember that we are dust. You know our frame. And, Lord, you've told us to ask as we be in your tender children, I'm thankful you understand and you're compassionate toward us. And Lord, you do exceeding abundant above all that we ask or think. And Lord, I'm grateful and thankful that you do because that reminds us and shows us your power and your might. And it also shows us our need to call upon you more and to see you do great things. And Lord, it opens and keeps open the door of communication between us that kindles and deepens our relationship with you my what a joy to have a relationship with the god of the universe the lord who knows all things who's able to do all things increases our faith in these days in which we live to keep us walking closer to you and helps us now i ask you lord that you'd open our hearts and our minds to your word tonight as we open it I'm thankful, Lord, that it is quick and power, powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword. And it has the uh, ability, Lord, to help us tonight as we take it. And, Lord, as we uh, use it, digest it, bring it into our minds and our hearts tonight, what you have for us. And then, Lord, as we, uh, Lord, depart, as it's planted in our minds and hearts, that you'll bring it alive. And you'll use it mightily, Lord, to conform us to the image of your dear Son. We'll thank you and praise you for all that you do in Jesus' wonderful name. Amen. Amen. We're in the book of James. James tonight. The book of James. And uh, we'll pick up in uh, James chapter number 3. You remember last week 
We looked at the first five verses in James chapter number three. James chapter number three. We've made it to chapter number three. And here James is dealing with the tongue. Last week we started in these first five verses the proper use of the tongue. He talked about, of course, uh, how we need to ask the Lord, of course. I'll say some more about that in a few moments. And controlling our tongues, the evil tendency that we have with our tongues, and of course to properly use our tongues. He talks about we can learn that uh, our tongues can be used generously or unselfishly. He talks about there in verse number one. And then he says there in verse number two, we can learn that we should use our tongues also gently or carefully. There in verse number two, he talks about that. And then we saw in verse number three, four, and five that we can use our tongues graciously. Graciously, he talked about in uh, those first five verses. We talked about the proper use of the tongue, graciously to uh, give forth benefit. He talks about uh, and showed us like a horse with a bridle, with a ship uh, and a rudder. He said those things without that, a horse without a bridle, a ship without a rudder is like an untamed tongue. It means our lives are out of control. And a horse without a bridle is a horse without, out of control. A ship without a rudder is a ship without, out of control. And James reminds us of that very thing, that our lives without a tongue in control is out of control. And so we need to learn, of course, ask God to help us uh, to control and properly use our tongues. Tonight we're going to use, uh, look at a few more verses here because he, he continues to talk about the tongue. In chapter number three, we're going to talk about better use or better understanding and to bridle our tongues. And I need this worse than anybody. I know God's been working on me and I saw some things in this and I thank God that I did and I'm asking him to help me every day. Uh, to better use my tongue or to bridle my tongue. <clears throat> if you're able and can't stand with me, I want to read these next few verses, 5 through 12, and we'll look at this next uh, series of illustrations he gives us concerning to better understand and bridle our tongue. He says, Even so, the tongue is a little member and boasteth great things. Behold how great a matter a little fire kindleth. And the tongue is a fire, a world of iniquity. So the, is the tongue among our members, that it defileth the whole body, and setteth on fire the course of nature, and it is set on fire of hell. For every kind of beast, and of birds, and of serpents, and of things in the sea is tamed, and hath been tamed of mankind. Look at verse 8. But the tongue can no man tame. It is unruly, it is an unruly evil, full of deadly poison. Therewith, with the tongue, Bless we God, even the Father, and therewith, with the tongue, curse we men, which are made after the similitude of God. Out of the same mouth proceeded blessing and cursing. My brethren, these things ought not so to be. Then he renders the question, verse 11, Doth the fountain send forth at the same place sweet water and bitter? Can a tree, a fig tree, can the fig tree, my brethren, bear olive berries, either a vine, figs, so can no fountain both yield salt, water, and fresh. You can be seated. I want to look at these verses tonight <clears throat> and talk about a better understanding in bridling our tongue. Like I said, I need it probably as worse as anybody in here. I said last week, uh, there, I haven't met anybody. I met people that had the best, uh, best ability I've ever seen, a whole lot better than me, and uh, the use of the tongue, but we all need help, don't we? Uh, why do you say that, preacher? Verse number eight, the tongue can no man tame. 
Uh, James says it here. So we need help. We need help from God to tame our tongues. That's the only way it's going to happen. Now he gives us the illustration with a horse without a bridle and a ship without a rudder. And he talks about our lives, our entire lives are out of control when we have an untamed tongue or uncontrolled tongue. Now the third illustration he takes up here is something we well know, something we can well understand, something we have seen and hopefully you haven't experienced, although they have been experienced and you've seen it on the news for sure. He talks about a match or a little torch and how a little spark can start a little flame and a little flame can start a huge fire. And a great forest can be completely destroyed with what? Just a little match. And he uses that illustration, of course, that flame from a tiny spark can ignite a fire, can destroy buildings, properties, and do millions and all, even billions. The last uh, fire I was looking at, uh, billions of dollars of damage uh, with one little spark. Now, the greatest fire in Georgia uh, to do damage was in 2007. It was down way down in Waycross, Georgia. It actually went into Florida as well. It was... Uh, down at the Sweat Farm Road there at Waycross, down low Waycross there, where a down power line, one little spark started a fire in dry conditions, and it began to burn April the 21st, and uh, it was renamed Big Turnarounds, what they called that fire, and of course a bugaboo fire is what it eventually was named because it ended up in Florida as well, doing a whole lot of damage. And uh, the winds, during the high winds of 2007, uh, it caused, in the low humidity, it caused lots and lots of damage. It burned out 80,000 acres. About 20% of, of course, of a refuge there was destroyed. 22 homes, forced evacuation of over 1,000 people. Had to cut a 12-mile fire break to, to even start containing that fire. That was in Georgia in 2007. Of course, our, our, one of our best known fires, of course, uh, with the fires is uh, in history, of course, was the Chicago fire. I'll say some more about that in a moment. But every dry season, our country is plagued by fires. They begin with a little spark, a down power line, or a lightning strike, or, oh boy, we don't want to even think about it, but someone who was careless careless. One of the greatest, most damaging fires in uh, California was actually two fires that got together, two wildfires that got together. One of them was the uh, source was unknown how it got started. It covered over five counties, burned into over five counties, these two fires did. But one of them, uh, and one of the counties that got started in the other county, it was started by a guy who was trying to burn out a wasp nest, <laughs> of all things. You think of that, how careless. Our tongues can destroy the same way. I want us to see, first of all, better understand and bridle our tongues begins with understanding that our tongues are dynamic. That means they, they can explode. They can blow up. They can... They're so powerful. We don't understand the power of our tongue. I, I, I don't. I haven't realized that even in all these years. Preaching and teaching and being married to a beautiful woman of over 40, almost 45 years, be November. Yeah, she, she looked at me. I better get that right. <clears throat> Telling you. Uh, of course, uh, you know, I robbed the cradle. She was a very, very young girl. She didn't know what she was doing. That's the only way I got her. Hey, man. But anyway, our tongues are dynamic. The Bible says here, it talks about even so the tongue is a little member. It talks about it. James here, he's talking about the destructive power of the tongue. The destructive power of the tongue. The tongue is very uh, powerful. Little member, little member, boasteth great things. But behold how great a manner a little fire, little fire kindleth. It was on Sunday, October the 8th, 1871. That uh, old Larry's barn, that old milk cow, yeah, you've heard the story, knocked over that lantern, it had that uh, flame in it, not, not, probably not an inch wide flame. 
and started that fire. 17, over 17,000 buildings left thousands homeless, cost more than 250 lives. Hmm. What you don't remember was on that October the 8th, 1871, several miles from Chicago, another fire took place in Wisconsin. The same night. Same night. It consumed a whole town of 1.5 million acres and uh, killed an estimated 2,500 people. But because of the population and the popularity of Chicago, it got very little attention. It was up in Wisconsin, neighboring Michigan, a little town, a little timber town, a little place that harvested timber, and boy, it caught wind and burnt, 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 killed lots of people, put a lot of people in very, very awful. As a matter of fact, they still study it today on how to control timber yards, lumber yards, to stop the fires if they break out in fire. Our tongues are like that. They're like uh, fire when it's out of control can set an entire community ablaze. You, you know that, especially with social media now. Uh, it's not necessarily our tongues, but what's posted with our fingers being our tongues now. The Bible talks about it, Proverbs chapter 10. Look at this verse, verse number 19. In the multitude of words, there wanteth not sin, but he that refraineth his lips is wise. In other words, in those multitude of words, boy, if you're not careful, you, you'll have a lot of sin going on. You'll spread a lot of damage. There's a lot of damage that can be undone by an untamed tongue uh, that uh, happens when you post words or say words hastily. I, I've had people lash out at me on Facebook and other social media things. And boy, I've been so tempted. I've typed out a response right quick. And before I hit that sin button, uh, thank God the Holy Spirit got a hold of me and I erased every bit of it. Never did even respond. Sometimes I just give it to Sister Karen and she said, you don't want to say that. I said, thank God. I got a good wife who's helping me here. She, she, you don't want to say it. It'll be misunderstood. I said, but, 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 but I didn't. No, you don't need to say anything. I said, you're right. I don't need to say anything. I wouldn't say anything. I've told people that I wouldn't say anything. There's a reason for that, of course. The Bible talks about that as well. Hasty words spoken in anger can ruin a marriage. Some of my greatest regrets in these 45 years, some of the words that's come out of my mouth to that wonderful woman over there. Careless words of criticism to a child. And we got teachers in here tonight. They'll, they'll confess that. They'll tell you that they've worked with students over the years who have endured criticism at home to the point that it has scarred that child to where they're doing everything in their power to try to help that child overcome the scars that have been inscribed upon the hearts of those children by the people that they've looked up to and respected. Careless words of criticism, gossip, they spread like a fire. Proverbs chapter 26 and verse number 20, uh, it tells us that we can stop, we can limit, we can what? Put an end to some of that. The Bible says where there's no wood, the fire goeth out. So is there where there is no tail bearer, the stripes cease. There means stop the whole situation by what? What I just did. Silence. Don't even talk about it. Don't even say nothing. Well, something needs to, you need to, no, sometimes you don't even need to correct it. You just need to quit talking about it altogether. I've seen churches that I believe had, had uh, tongue arsonists in them, verbal arsonists. I, I mean, they could start fires with their tongue, man, and try to burn the place down. James says it here in verse number six. Look at it. And the tongue is a fire, a world of iniquity. So is the tongue among our members. He says the world of iniquity. It's like dynamite. That's the reason I say our tongues are dynamic. They're like dynamite because they can do all kinds of damage. Ah, oh my. Oh, Lord, help me. 
Our words are like fire. It defileth the whole body, set it on fire, the course of nature. I've also realized, of course, in looking at this study, what our tongues can do. I'll say some more about that in a little while as well. Uh, but our tongues are so powerful, set on fire of hell, he writes here. The, the evil, the influence of the evil one getting a hold of our tongue and saying the wrong things. It's a beautiful story online. You'll, you'll have to Google it. No, you'll have to go to YouTube and then punch in, write in, type in Zig Ziglar, don't kick the cat. Just type that in. Zig Ziglar, don't kick the cat. Let him tell you the story. He, he can do it much better than I've ever done it. And man, he, Zig was a great guy. He was a great, uh, great, uh, motivate, motiva yeah. Yeah, you know what I'm trying to, motiva motivational speaker. Thank you. Yeah, you, you know what it is. He's a positive guy. He knew how to say everything positive. I don't know why I keep saying that. It's my tongue. There it is. We get fascinated. People that can roll their tongues and other people can't. That, that's an amazing feat. Some people can, some people can't. I can't roll my R's. I, I took Spanish. Man, I was so faithful to that class every week. We had a guy teaching Spanish at our, our church. And, and uh, man, I was trying my best to learn it. And he, 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 he spent time with me personally. He said, you just can't roll your R's, preacher. You just can't roll your R's. I don't know. I, I'm not a speech therapist. Maybe you need to get, speech, get with a speech therapist and learn how to roll your R's. You're never going to learn Spanish until you learn how to roll your R's. <laughs> but old Zig, he was, a, he was a great speaker, of course. That wasn't his name. His name was uh, Hillary Hinton Ziegler. That's the reason he went with Zig. I don't blame him. I would, too. He was one of about 12 kids. He was the 10th out of 12. They thought he was going to die. And, of course, uh, he made it. Z uh, Yazoo, Mississippi, Yazoo City, Mississippi. His father was a worker, and when he was very young, his dad died of a stroke, and, uh, and his young sister and, and others tried to raise him, had to raise him because his mother tried to raise him single-handedly. And then he went off to the Navy, and he come home, went to college, started college, quit college, Ended up being a great motivational speaker. Said it then. You had to get it. Probably. Had my tongue around my eye teeth while ago. Couldn't see what I needed to say. <clears throat> Finally got it loose. But anyway, Zig, Zig, he he really performed in great many feats and great many things of teaching salespeople. He became so successful in sales. Went to work uh, as in a, in selling cookware, and he was phenomenal wherever aluminum company is what he went to work for first and then of course he was phenomenal in selling in the selling technique he he formed a business in teaching salespeople how to sell how to sell themselves how to stay positive promoting themselves he got married was a great successful person uh, very very wealthy very very successful and God got a hold of his heart and he got saved. He started implementing uh, the salvation story into his motivational speaking, and he did that till he died. Published 39, uh, I, I forgot how many books. I shouldn't have said 39. It was, it mean, over 30 books, I think, to his name. And, of course, at the uh, age of 86, he became one of the most richest, most influential speakers in the world. I said all that to say this, how God used him tremendously. But he says in that, don't kick the cat, he talks about how one little thing can upset us and we say the wrong things to the wrong person or to the right person, say the wrong things, and that person turns and starts saying the wrong things. You just have to watch the story. It's a great, great story. A man comes home from work and he's grumpy and he takes it out on his wife and then they, she takes it out on the children. Next thing you know, the whole house is what? Set a fire of hell. It's on fire, verbally, fussing at each other. Oh, don't kick the cat. Go home and listen to the story. Proverbs chapter 12, verse 18 says, There is that that speaketh like the piercing of a sword. People say things sometimes that cut to the heart. It's piercing of a, of a sword, 
hurt you. So we have to better understand our tongues are like dynamite. They can blow up things. They can hurt things. But then we have to understand that our tongues can be damaging. It's on the same line. Dynamic, they're powerful. They can be helpful, but they can be hurtful. He says it here in verse number 7. Every kind of beast, a bird, or serpent, things in the sea is tamed and hath been tamed of mankind. But the tongue can no man tame. He's talking about the tongue. We're fascinated, of course, by uh, trained animals. You ever seen them? I, it's unbelievable. It's unbelievable. The things that mankind can tame. I've seen pigs walk down a, a board and jump off into a swimming pool. <laughs> Never believe that ever happened. That's against the nature of a pig. It really is against the nature of a pig. You, you've seen all kinds of things, snakes, everything, all kinds of Animals you thought could never be tamed. But the Bible says it right here. He talks about every kind of beast, bird, serpent, uh, even of the sea. You've been to those whatever, uh, wherever, and watched uh, those, uh, those tricks that they teach those underwater creatures to do. Absolutely fascinating, amazing. And, uh, but yet the tongue, so many, oh, I even have to keep in control. James here, he shifts gears. He talks about our tongue. And he talks about the very fact that the human, uh, humans are able to tame all these dangerous animals. But the tongue can no man tame. No, no, no man can tame. Except he talks about Jesus, reminds us. He don't, but the Bible does. Matthew chapter 19, verse 26 he beheld them and said, what, with men this is impossible, but with God all things possible. That's the only way we can control our tongues, asking God to be our controller. Oh, my. Let him be in control of all of us, of everything of us. Oh, my. You, you, if you think back to the last time you said the wrong thing, ask yourself, did God have control of my tongue? Oh, my. That word unruly evil, he says it's unruly evil. It, 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 literally, it's talking about an animal breaking out of a cage. It's what the connotation it carries. It's full of deadly poison. That poison means to, of course, a poisonous snake or a poison bite of a venomous animal. It's like a poison, just a few drops of venom can uh, kill a person or cause them bodily harm to a great event. And, of course, he's talking about this poison. He, if we had poison in a container, we'd be very careful with it, wouldn't we? Why aren't we that way with our words? Proverbs chapter 8, and verse number 8, he said, All the words of my mouth are what? He, he says, are in righteousness, and there is nothing forward or perverse in them. Oh, my, that we could say that every day. We, we say things like, somebody needs to tell him. Hmm. I just gave him a piece of my mind. Well, you probably didn't have enough mind to be given away. I have a short fuse. And I just can't help it. Well, uh, we use phrases like that to try to justify sometimes unleashing uh, what? Unleashing hell upon someone as the tongue has the ability to do sometimes. But the Bible talks about here a faith that works in our lives is a faith of where we turn our tongues over to God. We let him use it to the edifying. That's where I'm getting to. Ephesians chapter number four here. He said, let no corrupt communication proceed out of your mouth, but that which is good to the use of edifying. Years ago, I did a study on uh, the one another's in the Bible. Probably need to go back and do that again. One of the one another's, of course, is the edifying. Edify one another. You, you know what an edifice is. And edifying one another is building up one another. How do you build up someone? You do it with your tongue. It's a powerful thing. I stopped today. Stopped today and talked to a man uh, who is working on uh, his life. And God has transformed his life over 30 days ago. And uh, he's still battling, of course, with things in his life. But I wanted to remind him that his 
testimony is preceding him. The word is being spread that God's done something in his life. What was you doing, preacher? I was trying to edify him. I was trying to use my words to speak life into him. You do that. You know that, don't you? Every day of your life, you use the words, the power of your tongue to what? That which is good or that which is evil. Now watch this. What if you did that with everyone? Mm. Picked up a guy this morning. Headed to Rome. He's walking down the road. Stop. I didn't even ask him if he wanted to ride. I just reached over and unlocked my door. Get on in. He's walking. <laughs> you know he's going somewhere. Time we got to the end of the road, I said, I'm going this way. He said, well, I was going downtown. So let's go downtown, man. Let's go downtown. Trying to edify, trying to use this opportunity to present the gospel, to let him know somebody cares about him. Somebody loves him. God loves you. There's a solution, you see. <laughs> There's a help here. Of using your tongue to glorify God, to edify, to build up. Oh my, admit to the Lord that we have inabilities to control our tongue. And of course, that's what it said before I ever, well, it was long before I ever left the house, before I ever got up. I started asking God to help me today. You now, Lord, you know what's ahead. You know what I've got planned. I start thinking of my schedule before I ever even get up many days, and even after I get up. Using our tongues to edify and build up. Dynamic. Our tongues can be dynamic, powerful. Our tongues can be damaging. But last of all, our tongues declare. And so many times uh, shows. Verse number nine. Therewith, what? With our tongues. Bless we God, even the Father. And therewith, what? Our tongues. Curse we men, which are made after the similitude of God. And then he explains that. He said, our tongues reveal what's in our hearts or what our hearts are really like. What's going on in this inside. That word bless. You know what that word bless means. It's like a eulogy. We're explaining. We're talking about. Speaking well of. And that word curse. It doesn't mean profanity. It means to do harm or cause harm. But it means in curse. So the ultimate use of our tongue is what? To bless God. How we do that? Singing, sharing his word, and being a blessing. His blessing to others. I want to do something, but I want to do it because God has blessed me. I want to do it because God says, I need to bless you. That's what I told that man today. I said, well, you don't know me. I don't know you. But you, your testimony is going before you, and God wanted me to stop by here and let you know. People watching your life, you're shining. Keep shining for it. Encourage one another. The things of God. How, how important would that be if every member of our church did that? Now, in a little while, I'll call names of folks that are sick, folks that are on our prayer list. And you stop and think about that all over our church life. Each one of us or should be or can be a part of our weekly Bible study on Sunday, but we call it Sunday school or Bible study groups. And if you fit in that class, those that would fit in your class, if they're not in that class, if you called them, you checked on our shut-ins, if you just checked on once a quarter, hey, I'm, well, I don't know them, preacher. You don't have to know them. You're a part of our church. I want you to know we pray for you. I noticed your name on our bulletin, in our bulletin, on our prayer list. I pray for you. Hey, don't say that unless you pray for them. Now. Oh, my. But pray for them. He says bless. Using our tongues. Taming our tongues. Controlling our tongues. It's more than restraining ourselves from vulgar talk. It's using God. Are using God's name in vain or lying. You, you see, we, we, we use it to bless too. That's controlling our tongues. Psalmist said, Psalms 139, verse number 14, I will praise thee. Now, we use the rest of this verse uh, many times a year. For I am fearfully and wonderfully made, marvelous are thy works, and that my soul knoweth right well. We use the rest of that verse. We know that we're fearfully and wonderfully made. 
But as we know we're fearfully and wonderfully made, why are we fearfully and wonderfully made? Wonderfully made? So that we will bless him. Bless God. I will praise thee. Do we praise him? With my tongue. Back there in verse number 11, he says, does a, does a same fountain send forth water? Bitter water and sweet water? I, I grew up in the country. I'm not ashamed of it. I'm proud of it. My daddy didn't have a whole lot. We didn't have a whole lot. There's four of us boys and one girl. Uh, she's the sweetest girl. I had to, get in, I had to be careful here. Uh, she came while well, I was pastoring her seat. down the very first time she walked in. I got in trouble. Heard her husband come in. I introduced her, and I don't know, my mind was running crazy, and I introduced her the wrong way. I'm not even going to tell you what I said, but I introduced her the wrong way, and she's never let me forget it. I went down and saw her day before her birthday this year, and she reminded me. I reminded her that I was going to try to refrain my tongue from ever saying that again. Uh, she is my only unique, wonderful, beautiful sister. So uh, we grew up in the country, so we didn't have a whole lot. So we'd go visit. I'd go visit with my daddy when we go visit folks. We visited country folks. Back then, folks lived out in the country. We visited poor folks, rich folks. It didn't matter. We thought they was rich. Some of them wasn't rich. I can remember a many, a many a day going to see folks who had a well on their back porch. Y'all remember those days? Ah, you ain't got to shake your head. You give your age away. I can remember when people used to have a well on the back porch. They draw the water. That's what we call it, draw water. Throw a bucket down in there. Well, you didn't throw it. You let that bucket down easy. People say, you drop the water. Oh, no, it depends on the well. You drop it down in the shallow water, shallow well, man, you mess up the water. That water would come up muddy. It would come up dirty. Come up with sand in the bottom of it. You didn't want to do that. You want to ease that bucket down in the water. You let that thing go. Oh, we go out there and have a fun time with it. We let it go and let it hear it splash. Boy, I'm telling you, Miss Benny Maud didn't come out there and get us too. And we'd stay with her a week sometime. And uh, we'd do that in the summertime. But I grew up out there and we draw up, draw up water from that well. We enjoyed it. And we was just boys. It's hard to draw up that bucket of water, you know, that gallon bucket of water. That eight pounds or something or ten pounds. That was tough for us to try to draw up out of that well. Out of that well. But we enjoyed it. You, you know what would come up out of that well? You know what kind of water would come up out of that well? You, you say sweet water, salt water, whatever water was in that well. If it was good water, good water would come out of it. If it's bad water, bad water would come out of it. That's the same way it is with our lives, isn't it? That's what he's saying here. That's exactly what happens. Luke chapter 6, verse 45. Look at this verse. A good man out of the good treasure of his heart bringeth forth that which is good. An evil man out of the evil treasure of his heart bringeth forth that which is evil. Look at the last, last phrase Jesus says here. For, I, for of the abundance of the heart his mouth speaketh, he says. The abundance of his heart. Hmm. I've been around, worked around people, you know, they let a cuss word slip. Oh, I didn't mean for that to come out. I said, it must have been in for it to come out. Oh, my. Work on your heart. God's interested in the heart. He says here in verse number 12, Can the fig tree, my brethren, bear olive berries, either of vine, figs? So can no fountain both yield salt, water, and fresh. He talks about here, of course, the nature of that which comes forth from our lives, giving our hearts totally to the Lord and learning, of course, and understanding to bridle our tongues. We have to ask for God's help. We have to regularly ask for God. I ask every day. Sometimes I fail. I'll take the, I'll take the bridle. <laughs> I'll take the reins away from him, and I'll turn loose. Boy, I'm telling you, oh, my Oh, my. We have to ask God to help us change our attitudes of our hearts. Colossians chapter 3 says, Forbearing one another, forgiving one another. If any man have a quarrel against any, even as Christ forgave you, so also do ye. So we can, of course, ask God to help us in understanding and bridling our tongues. Thank God we can. Let's pray together. Father, I want to thank you for what you're showing us. Our Lord, through James, 
in our tongues, how important, how powerful our tongues can be to the edifying, the building up, the helping, Lord, of building your people, strengthening, encouraging, lifting burdens. Oh, Father, if we could all just see that and be a part of that and encourage one another. Lord, just uh, just the little short things. Lord, I, I realize all of us don't need to call everybody. Sometimes we have the capabilities now in this modern age of text and uh, Lord, all these other things that we have to get the word to someone that we're reminded of them, we're praying for them, we, uh, Lord, just interested in them. Their, their lives crossed our minds today and we prayed for them. How important that is. Lord, I pray that you continue to help me to understand and bridle my tongue. Use it for your glory. We'll praise you for all you do. In Jesus' wonderful name, amen, amen.